Rev up your engines! Due to popular demand and my wife, I am starting to clean out my garage. So we're going to go into the depths of the dark garage. And since it's so dark inside, we're going to have to get my light stand out to look inside. Now I do have to admit that there's things inside here that I probably haven't seen in years. Or even used in years. So here we go. Let's start in the back. What's hiding over here? Oh man, it's an old dwell meter. Okay, you might well ask, what's a dwell meter? Well, in the olden days when cars had mechanical ignition, you had to set the degrees that the points opened and closed. And you would hook these two leads up to the ignition system and you'd put it on four, six, or eight depending on the cylinders of the car, and you could adjust the dwell to get it just at the right percentage. <laughs> this thing, <laughs> unless you got yourself a 62 Ford, you're never going to need to use this. <laughs> and with this part, it also did ignition timing, because when you set points, a lot of times the end's a little bit different shape than the original one, so that would affect the ignition timing. You'd have to retime the engine by adjusting the distributor. Well, cars don't have distributors anymore. You don't adjust timing. The computer does all that stuff. So this is definitely a blast from the past that maybe I'll never use again. Who knows? Well, the next thing is once I take out these old motorcycle shocks I have sitting here, high in under there is a giant spring compressor. This giant machine that cost almost a thousand dollars is used to compress struts. Now you can certainly tell I don't use this thing much since it's covered with all that junk. And here's the main reason why. It's relatively cumbersome. This is what I use most of the time. These are my spring compressors. Simple technology. A giant bolt and the pieces that hold onto the spring and compress it. You put one on one side and one on the other. I found that those are actually safer than that giant thing. Years ago I was using the giant one on a Volvo and those skinny little arms, they slipped and it ripped my finger the whole way around, pulled all the skin up. You can see the bone under there. And I thought, oh whoa, I don't like this machine anymore. And it worked out fine, my finger works fine. So now, guess what? I use this thing that costs like $40 to do struts now it's safer, I never had a problem with it, and it's simple, cheap technology that works. That's why it lives in the front down here, because I use it all the time. Now let's look a little further. Well, what's this? Oh look, a nice set of gear wrenches. Now these gear wrenches are great. They have little ratchets in them, and they have an open end one, and these are kind of stubby ones, so they fit in great little holes. Why am I not using these? Well, the reason for that is this. If you look closely, it says five eighths of an inch. All cars these days that I work on are metric. This is English. So this doesn't fit any of the cars anymore. That's why these gear wrenches are sitting back on the wall. Heck, I use my metric set all the time to get in places. I got straight ones. I got ones that are long and they curve so you can get in spaces. But since the cars don't use English fractions anymore. I don't use these anymore. Well, let's look around the back some and out. Here's something. Zato atomic metal conditioner. And what's inside here? Voila. The box says it's for automatic transmissions. That it's a one stage revitalant. Every single one of these magic engine injection things I've asked the companies. Send me actual proof that these things work scientists that I can get a hold of. I've never been able to talk to any of them because, of course, this is a bunch of made up nonsense. They're just preying on people's gullibility that, hey, for 1995, you can rejuvenate your automatic transmission. Come on now, things don't work that way. Sometimes these things actually do damage. Now, I do have to say, look, it's a real cool, ooh, blue gel that comes out. It looks really neat. <laughs> I don't advise anybody sticking the stuff in their $5,000, $6,000 automatic transmission these days. Who knows what the stuff will do. So let's look around a little more. There's my 12 ton press. And hey, there's that wheel bearing grease I was talking about in the previous episode. Since you can't really grease wheel bearings anymore, only the old ones. You can see, I haven't used that thing in years either. It's just sitting there. So why don't I use my 12 ton press? Well, that's because I replaced it years ago with my 20 ton press. It's a much bigger, better press than the other one. It's got 20 tons of pressure power. And yes, being a pack rat, I've covered it with various tools, but I use these tools all the time. And whenever I need to press, it only takes about a minute and I just move them on 
throw them outside the garage, use the press, and then hang them all back on when I'm done. It is in the front of my garage after all, so it's something I use all the time. So I guess it's time to get rid of the 12 ton press in the back. Hey, I'll give it away today to somebody. Well, let's look around some more. And, oh, there's a box. Let's see what's inside this box. I haven't looked in that in years. There's an old refrigerant leak detector. It detects when your AC's leaking. Well, lo and behold, I saved the plug, so I'll plug it in, turn it on. You can see the lights are coming on. Well, it doesn't work anymore, so this one's just going straight in the garbage can. This is a power steering repair kit for hoses. It's got a bunch of fittings in it, so you can make a power steering hose when yours break instead of buying an expensive one. And even I know why it's sitting in that box that I haven't looked at for years. And that's for one main reason. Okay, there's a million different sizes and shapes of power steering hoses these days. I tried using this thing once. Shh. Didn't have the fitting that I needed. Didn't have the right size hose. And if you gotta manufacture parts for your car, it's not that smart of an idea to do. I mean, let's face it. You have to buy the bulk hose with ends for them. And you have to buy the fittings that go on that are the right size. And you gotta cramp them on with the tool that they have. And this kit wasn't cheap to begin with. I mean, if you live in the North Pole or something, <laughs> You gotta fix it and you got a bunch of bulk hose around you know what connectors fit your vehicles fine and dandy But for the average person heck you can go to any discount auto parts store and for most cars You can get quality built power steering hoses for sometimes one quarter of the price of the original And when I price what this stuff costs not even including the kit but the replacement parts where you build your own, it's actually cheaper to buy one that's made in China that works perfectly fine versus assembling your own and hoping you don't screw up and make it leak. Now this tool was obviously an idea that they were trying to sell to mechanics. Mechanics don't want to stock all this stuff. And really, if a power steering hose is leaking and a customer wants their car fixed, you think they're going to wait days for parts to come in and then build the thing? They're going to go to the store and buy a new one and put it on. I mean, we don't build our own cars anymore. And since this is Mechanic Monday, I'm going to give away that 12 ton press that I was talking about because I don't use it anymore. To have a chance to win, just place a clean, non offensive comment on the YouTube comments below, and a winner will be chosen randomly by computer to get a 12 ton press. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.